Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. Our parable today is about patches and wineskins. One day a group of religious people who were uncomfortable with Jesus and his disciples accused him of not teaching his disciples to fast and to pray. This is what they said. The disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and so do the disciples of the Pharisees, but yours eat and drink. John chapter 5, verse 33. Keep in mind, Jesus had just called Levi to follow him. And to the surprise of everyone, Levi walked away from his tax booth to follow Jesus. That night, he threw a public party to honor Jesus and his disciples. Of course, the religious leaders had a lot to say about that. They grumbled to his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? Luke chapter 5 and verse 30. They said it loud enough to be sure that Jesus heard what they were saying. And Jesus gave a brilliant reply. He said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have come not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Luke chapter 5, verse 32 and 31. I am so glad that Jesus came for people just like that, who don't feel qualified to serve God. Perhaps you feel like Levi. You don't feel qualified to follow Jesus. You might feel disqualified because of things you have done or have not done. I hope Jesus' answer to his critics and today's parable will cause you to feel welcomed by Jesus to follow him. Listen to how Jesus replied to those who questioned him about fasting and praying. Jesus said, Can you make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? Jesus waited a moment for his critics to think about what he had just said. The obvious answer to Jesus' question about wedding guests fasting while they're with the groom is no. Being with the groom is a time for celebrating with great joy. And Jesus was saying, I've been sent from God to release power and the message he sent me to bring. And now is the time for you to celebrate my presence with you. Enjoy the miracles that I'm doing right now, like saying to a lame man, get up and walk. It was seeing the lame man get up and walk that convinced Levi to follow Jesus. And I am sure that he is one of the guests who was invited to Levi's party. Jesus referred to him and many others when he said, it is the sick who need a physician. Then Jesus said, the day will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. Luke chapter 5, verse 34 and 35. Jesus was referring to when he would be crucified by the religious and political leaders, and that would be the right time to fast and to pray. Jesus never intended for fasting and prayer to be a religious activity. If we don't feel closer when we fast or pray, we have missed the blessing of being in the presence of the Father. If we don't hear the Father's voice or feel the joy of the Spirit rising up within us, then our fasting and our praying has missed what God intended for us to experience. Now, one way I know that my fasting is in the will of God is when I have no problem being around food or even meeting people for lunch and enjoying their company. Prophet Isaiah was very clear about this when he said, Behold, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to hit with a wicked fist. Fasting like yours this day will not make your voice heard on high. Isaiah 58 and verse 4. And then he went on to say, is such a fast that I chose, a day for a person to humble himself? Is it to bow his head down like a reed and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will you call this a fast and a day that is acceptable to the Lord? Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 5. 
And one time I was invited to an Islamic university to talk about biblical fasting and prayer. I quoted these verses during the lecture and asked the students the same questions that I'm asking in this message. Do you feel the joy of Holy Spirit rising up within you when you fast? Do you hear the voice of God when you pray? You don't hear the voice of God. Something is missing. Now, most people I know say that moving eating from daytime to nighttime is not a healthy practice. And many Muslims resent Ramadan and feel forced to do it. And plenty of people gain weight rather than lose weight during that time of fasting. This is why it is important to be led by the Spirit of God when to pray and when to fast. It is not just doing it religiously. Uh, now, without giving any explanation, Jesus followed up on the conversations with his critics with two very short parables. He said, no one tears a piece from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. If he does, he will tear the new and the piece on the new will not match the old. Luke chapter 5 and verse 36. This parable did not need any explanation. It was so obvious to anyone living in that day what Jesus meant. But today, we can purchase pre-shrunk cloth and patches that will not shrink. Then Jesus said, no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skin and it will be spilled and the skins will be destroyed. Luke chapter 5, verse 37. Jesus finished the parable by saying, new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. Luke chapter 5 and verse 38. It is obvious that this parable is not about patches or wineskins. It is about the difference between the message Jesus came to preach and old religious thinking. We cannot mix Jesus' ways with the religious culture that he came to change. The kingdom of God is very different from the kingdoms of religion. If you try to take an old religious garment and patch it up with Jesus, something is going to tear. Now, Jesus is not seeking to cover up problems so that no one else will be able to see them. He wants to change us from the inside out. And here are some of the marks of old wineskins. My value is defined by what I do. My comfort is in avoiding risk. My preference is to change as little as possible. By contrast, here are some of the marks of the new wine skin Jesus came to offer us. My identity is in being a well-loved child. I am doing what Jesus said I can do. I'm feeling stretched by my experience with Jesus. Now, old wine skins cannot accommodate the new wine of Jesus' ways, of his thinking, of his living, because they've already been stretched as far as they can go. Jesus came to change religious ways into a vibrant, exciting relationship with God the Father. Now, many people are holding on to values that don't mix with the values of Jesus. And Jesus lovingly pulls his followers towards a new vision, a new sound, a new fast, and new garments. This new vision is expressed in the sayings of Jesus, who said, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And the message that Jesus preached in the Sermon on the Mount goes against the natural human way of thinking. Jesus said, it is the humble who are raised up by God. Now, the next move of God always has a new sound. There's a reason that the Bible speaks about God putting a new song in our mouths. And when we sing the songs of a past revival, we miss the sound of the songs that God has anointed for this generation. 
Then there's a new fast. Just recently, I completed a 21-day fast, a Daniel fast, that revolutionized my mind and my body. There are primarily two different kinds of fasts that are mentioned in the Bible. The Daniel fast is for revelation, and the Jesus fast is for power in the Holy Spirit. The Daniel fast opens our ears to hear the voice of the Father. The Jesus fast fills us with power to heal the sick and to cast out demons. The new wineskins are the new garment that Jesus offers us. It is a garment of holiness filled with the Spirit of God, overflowing into the lives of the people that we touch from day to day. Now, Jesus warned that many people would not like the new wine that he offered. So he concluded his parable by saying, No one, after drinking the old wine, desires the new, for he says the old is better. Luke chapter 5 and verse 39. But at the wedding of Canaan, Jesus proved that his wine is better. The host was expecting the new wine to have less quality than the original wine. But to his surprise, the new wine was better than the old. The new wine Jesus offers comes with a new taste. And after one sip, you'll know that Jesus is better than anyone else in this world to follow. Matthew says, Jesus finished the parable by saying, new wine is put into new wineskins, and both are preserved. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 17. Not only will Jesus give us a new taste for his way of thinking, he will give us protection that we need as we stretch and learn his ways of living. I hope this message has given you a new perspective on the ways of Jesus. I invite you to turn to him for salvation. Leave rigid religion behind and enter into the vibrant life that Jesus offers to his followers. Thank him for dying for you and your place on the cross and receive him as your savior right now. If you just turn to Jesus for salvation, write to me, and let me know what God has just done for you. If you need a healing, place your hand on your pain and fill the one with pain or disease with faith right now to believe that you still heal today. I command your pain and your disease to go by the power of God that Jesus came to release. Let me know if you have just received a healing. Next week, we'll continue studying the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk to someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as a dollar a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations for Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.